anyone have any pressing? Uh, there's two things I want to talk about. Um, the one is the swimmer, the transgender swimmer from UPenn. How do you guys feel about that? And then the second topic I like to talk about is what's happening tomorrow, the NFL playoffs. One, uh, first one, I don't know what you're talking about, Trent. Oh, you, you I sure did not hear this? this. Yeah, no really? idea. So, so you guys. I'll break it down plain and simple. There's a transgendered male to female that is now on the swim, the girl swim team. She yeah. was a man. She is now considered a woman. She is on the women's swim team, and she is basically dominating the sport and basically kicking all these girls that have a shot at going to the Olympics for swimming have no shot now because of her. That I mean, so my thoughts are like I. It's a weird, slippery slope because I get it, you know. If you tr transition, but like if you were a male, I get it. You could have all the, you know. I know they do like estrogen shots or whatever. You you're have still all the, the you're nuts and bolts. I get what you're saying. Yeah, but it's, but it's just, just still hard like for me to kind of look at you in a different way and a in an athletic standpoint because you are already. At somewhat of an advantage because in, in theory, or if you look at men to females, men are usually bigger, stronger, faster. Yes. I'm not saying that all men are bigger, faster, stronger. Yes. Usually but they like are. the cre like top athletes, Division one athletes, yes. You, usually they are. Yes. So if you have basically a D1 swimmer that was a dude that now is a woman that's a D1, he's going to be a little bit better than everybody else. Let's, let's call a spade a spade. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um. Wow. This is a very. Uh, <coughs> I know it's a touchy subject. Touchy but subject, but it's but something no, good to talk about. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those. I can remember back some of the first years I became an athletic director, and this uh, as this topic, you know, started to come through the ranks, um, you know, more frequently, and you know, you had all of these associations putting together their their policies on on transgender athletes and that. So. Um, so in the high school, in the high school circle, the policy with the PIAA <laughs> is they'll consider that student whatever gender the principal says the student is. So if the student is a male to female and has gone through with everything they needed to from the school and 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 are registered. As a female, mm -hmm. students female athletically. Female to male, students male. Um, okay. In the high school setting, I honestly don't think it's that big of a deal. I really don't. Uh, because because the part the part that I I struggle with, like and and, and the this pen case to me is the exception for me because if. You know, the, you, we could go around. You know, you get some people that this—it's—it's it's absolutely ridiculous that, you know, anybody would do that. Anybody would allow right. their children to do that. Well, I, my stance is, you do what you want to do. As long as you're happy. It is not. Yeah. yeah, it's not black and white. It's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. It's not one or the other. Right. There's there's all of us that, you may do something or you know for, from a, a a feminine characteristic even though you're male. Like so, there, there's that. To me, it's a sliding scale. Where do you fit on that sliding scale? Right. Right. So, all that stuff aside, the argument stuff aside, in the high school, I don't think it affects the athletics as much because we can all, without naming names and any, any, we can all come up with cases where you have a high school male that plays sports is playing on all of our male teams, mm -hmm. right? And it may be 18, 19 years old. By the time they finish here, they still haven't, quote, unquote, gone through puberty. Yes. Yeah. Right? So, um, you know, so they're not as developed. They're not, they're, they're weaker. They're smaller. They're not, right? Right. Um, we've, had, we've had guys come through and at 13 have more facial hair right. than I've ever grown up. You know, uh, accumulated in my life. That looked like a grown right? man at thirteen. Yeah, right. at thirteen. So, so you're already comparing apples and oranges on the boy side, and then on the girl side, you know, you have your uh, female athletes that I'll put up against any of our males. 
and can go through out the there years and dominate them, and right? dominate the game. So, so if you have a male to a female, um, you know, obviously nobody's nobody's overly concerned about the female to male yes individual right 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 coming in and participating in, in baseball football boy soccer the only or thing you run into is like if, do they use the same locker room or you're right like that's right, the only, that's right, the only problem you're right. going to run in there yes and then and and to that point to me whatever they're at in their in their transition i don't think the locker room thing is not an an issue to me because whatever their circumstance is you know let Again, the wor- the worst case everybody talks about is the male to female, right? Right. So if that male to female, you, her, she wants to be included as a female. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To me, the last thing that individual is going to do is show that they're possibly anatomically different. Well, that they you run into that problem at, at <clears throat> well, Penn, right, right, where she's basically not covering up her. <laughs> areas and right. the, and the other girls are seeing everything and they're like this is kind of weird. And and that's kind of where the whole U Penn thing is is like okay, and not kind of enough's enough from an athletic standpoint. Yeah. You do what you want to do individually. You know, and as a person and if this is at the time of your point or the point in your life that you've made the decision to go through with this. Right. Congratulations. You know, I'll, I'll the wish you nothing but the best. However, in this case, you are you're a male, you've gone through puberty, you've gone through, you have developed as a male. Mm -hmm. And at that point, there is no arguing. Once you've gotten to that point, you're physically at an advantage over a female. And in the question right now at the NCAA level is, the rule is, as long as you have been taking testosterone suppressing drugs, Right or therapy for one year, you can now compete as a as a female, mm-hmm. as in this case. So, so this individual at Penn has done that and followed that, right? But again, the argument now is is one year enough? So, okay, you you've gotten rid of testosterone from your body for the last calendar year at least, but is that enough to undo the physical I don't think so. And you're saying dominant right. characteristics. And that she you've is gone currently through. dominating in yes, swimming. Because, okay. yeah. because so then no. she was right, because before that I, and I don't know the abs- absolute details, but let's just say for argument discussion sake, freshman year, sophomore year competed as a male at Penn. Yeah. At a high level. Right. Uh, high level. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. At right. a high level. Then Goes through the transition, and now let's just say again, just for argue, for discussion's sake, junior senior, right? Or maybe even didn't even compete as a it junior. Didn't compete as a now, junior, has now as a senior, year. You're, yeah. you're competing as a female. Yeah, that's having t- having tough. So now suppress testosterone for one here's year. Here's a question. I I don't know if it's true or not, but just because I'm thinking about it now, she goes through this now, but all of a sudden after she's done with swimming, she says, "You know what? I I don't know about this." I want to go back to being a man. Like, how would you feel about that then? See, to me, if you're like, it was almost like just uh to com- to compete, just like to be be yeah. the best at something. I feel yeah. like I mean, it's all then, said and then done. at that point, that's more disturbing. Yeah, if you're gonna go through that process and like take simply, estrogen shots and stuff like yeah, that's simply for academic or I mean yeah, athletic athletic uh, gain or athletic uh, competitive success. Yeah. I mean, you need you need counseling. Yes, you, you yes, do. you do. Yeah, not, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, not, but but if you want to go through, if you're going through this transition because that's you, then 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 do it. <clears throat> However, from a competitive standpoint, you know we're we're we are right now 50 years in the Title IX. Like this is the year we're celebrating 50 years of Title IX. What are you doing to these these females? That are getting shortchanged because of this situation. So now we're blending two very touchy subjects and hot topics, and you know, in, in the world of athletics, and they're blending together. And, you know, you got to kind of head on crash. Do you think maybe again, maybe not in the high school level, but the college level? Do you 
ever foresee a scenario where they're like, okay, based on everything that you just said, because I agree with, all right, once you're, once you physically develop to a point, like, I feel like you could take all the suppressing testosterone, suppress, you're just, you're, you're still going to be at an advantage, right? That's just, um, you think there's ever a point where, like, they decide, okay, if you're going from, you know, male to female or vice versa, that they just say, for for competitive to not give you a competitive advantage like you still need to compete as your previous gender yeah, like I, open, well, I feel like you're opening up a whole can of worms but then I feel like the other option is well then you can't compete in athletics you know what I mean so then why are you discriminating against me correct you, there, you, I like that's there's the, no, that's there's no win there's, there's no there's win the, that's their argument yeah. Nobody's winning so I, an argument on this because you're going to – Everyone has an argument. Yes, you're constantly going to spin something in one direction. You're, you're always looking to yeah. – You know, you have the Title IX, you have a discrimination, and then you have the choice of, of um, you know – Do you really want to have to pay How you identify your gender identification. I don't think the schools are going to want to have to pay all this money in lawyers and everything else if they lose these settlements. That's the – Yeah, I mean – it, well, I don't think it. Uh, yeah, I don't think. I mean, it would have to be like an NC. Or I don't know the it's, governing it's body. It would have to be an NCAA. The NCAA. And what they're and, and it's the um, the IOC, the International Olympic Committee. <laughs> Should I text you know, my guy and be like, "Listen, this is what we're talking about. What do you got thoughts?" You know, but yeah, it, if he ever it, answers you, yeah. you know, again, and that, but that is the situation that is happening right now at Penn that is going to disrupt athletics, and it and it's our and it's already happened. Because you know, I've had this, I've had this case or this argument all the time, and and, and quite honestly, ten, fifteen years ago, I was probably as ignorant as anybody else. Um, but as I've learned more, um, you know, when when this, when an individual or a family decides to take this, um, go through with this process and 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 do that, um, especially at a young age. I'm telling you that whether it's male to female or female to male, if you go to, you know, you're driving to Penn State and you stop off at a rest stop on Interstate 80 and it was it's a female to male in the bathroom with you, you're not going to know the difference. Yeah. You really aren't, you know. But it's those, it's the situations like the, the student at Penn, when, when an individual goes through the puberty as a male and then – you know, it it's tough to go back to, to reverse a it. female Kinda. appearance. Yeah. Right. You know, it's right. obviously easier to do if that's your choice prior to puberty. Puberty. And you know, and, and and testosterone flying through your body. So, um, you know, it's it's a it's a t- it's a tough tough topic, and and I do not envy anybody in that situation in the with Penn, but that's. That's to me is, you know, again, I go back to there's the Title IX. We're supposed to, you know, be advocating for gender equity in sports, um, improving and increasing the opportunities for females in athletics. Um, you know, we're, we're cognizant and of the, the gender identification and issue, transgender athlete, um, but at some point like it, it's hard and i don't know what the answer is because i want you to i want that individual i want that student athlete at penn to go through <coughs> with with what they believe in or how they feel mm-hmm. but we're hurting yeah. we're hurting competitive athletics like I, yeah. i'm thinking if you even if you well. had enough and i don't want you to i don't want to i don't want to be the guy that says you can't <laughs> You can't compete because of this, but it's hard to it's hard to just justify. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is. Mm. So now that you know about it, what are your thoughts on it? Who didn't we already get? Yeah, like <laughs> so. Didn't we so already? <laughs> so we we gave you the background. I told you where I stand. <laughs> <laughs> You're the guy that makes the decision. What's your decision? Yeah, what are you? We're yeah, putting you on the. Yeah, hook. what are you? No, about it? you can't put me on the. Well, one, I didn't know. So, like, I, I think it's tough, right? I'm with you in terms of if that's a decision you want to make. Like, okay, I was a male, born a male. 
identify as a female. I'm going to do all this to, you know, to transition because that's what I feel. Mm -hmm. More power to you. The athletic component of it, and again, we, I mean, I just put my thoughts out there and there is no right answer, but when you are a male and you're a high competitive swimmer, right, at UPenn, right. Division One athlete, and then you transition, like, it's just not going to be fair. Like, it's just, it, it, there's no way, there's no way around it. Right. Based on everything that he just said. Like, once you're developed and, you know, one way, like, it's tough to, even, even if it was the other way, like, if you are a female and you're 21 and you decide, you know, I want to become a male, they could shoot you with, you know, all the testosterone. Be right back. We got a surprise. All the testosterone that they want. I just don't think you're ever going to be able to. You're ever going to catch up. Yeah. You know, like, right. So it's tough uh, in that scenario. 